First and second in the championship up to now. Rick Carson on the inside, Golob gate two, Dano gate three, Hamill on the outside. Hamill got here by coming second in heat eight. Dano got here by winning heat seven. Rick Carson and Golob, they reference for the British Grand Prix. Gate one, the most popular for victory so far. And Tony Ricardson's there in the red helmet colours. The starting gate held by the referee. Ricardson, oh, they're both down there. Ricardson and Golob pile up. Dano goes into the fence. Absolute mayhem. I'm sure that our referee somehow will put them all back in. But Peter, what carnage. Yeah, this was the start. What a way to go here. Like Ricardson's pulling away and he catches Golob as they, as they enter the first turn. Golob. And Ricardson go down very, very heavily there, tangled together. And Dano on the outside slid off also into the safety fence. Uh, what a start for this Heat 11. Well, you have to say, I really don't know who's to blame. Tony Ricardson seemed to hold his line. Golob seemed to lay, lay, lay into him. Poor old Dano on the outside, totally innocent party. And really, well, I don't know who was at fault there, Peter. Well, I think the referee's going to put everybody back in this one. But you can see Thomas there, he seems to have done something to his leg. We can see the start again. Ricardson comes across the front of Golob, but Golob was leaning on Ricardson. Now, Sam said earlier about the track being uh, like a funnel as you enter that corner. And uh, there's Thomas on the ground. They went into the corner. There wasn't enough room for everybody together. We did see that in heat one. But well, there's Thomas, the current uh, leader, on the floor. He caught his hand on the back wheel of Tony Rickardson's bike. And uh, I seriously hope that his, his world championship tonight isn't going to end here. We well, can... for Thomas Golob, it could be absolute disaster if he finishes up from that ambulance in the hospital. We're waiting for the decision from our referee. The man I feel sorry for is Stefan Dano, totally innocent. Tony Rickardson... Well, it seemed to me that uh, Golob trying to cut in on him, Peter, was perhaps the prime cause, but I'm sure you're right about well, the referee. Yeah, uh, Tony Rickardson was moving out and Thomas Golob was coming in, and I think the footrest of Tony Rickardson's bike went into Thomas's front wheel, and that caused the tangle, but uh, Thomas seems to be uh, holding his leg, his arm seems to be OK, so it's possibly a leg, pro uh, leg problem. Well, the ambulance onto the track very, very quickly. What will happen here is that Thomas Golob will be taken by ambulance into the pits where he will be seen by a doctor who will have to decide whether or not he's fit to ride. We're still waiting to hear the official decision of our referee. Thomas Golob has engineered the circumstances to come out in this. I just wonder what will happen at that first bend when Tony McCarthy and Thomas Golob come together again. This is the rerun, the restart of Heat 11. This is boiling up. The atmosphere is tense here in Bitcoin. The riders certainly are. And the man in blue there, Thomas Golob, trying to get us faster, but look, here they go. It's picked up. Golob leads across. Golob goes wide. Rickardson picks it up on the inside. Golob goes round the outside. Rickardson lifts. Golob takes advantage of the space, the time. He goes wide. Rickardson comes through again. We've got a speedway race on our hands here with a vengeance. What a battle between the top two in the Grand Prix. Yeah, Thomas he seems to be riding pretty erratic. He had that race in the bag there, but he went wide coming into the pit turn. Again, that was the place he lost it. He went too wide, which allowed Tony Rickardson to fly by him on the inside. You could say Rickardson, cool, calm and collected. Golob, the man with inspiration, the man with flair, the man who uses every inch of the track. But Rickardson at the moment is out front. Rickardson is going to take the checkered flag if it stays like this. Thomas Golob is going to be with him. Dano and Hamilton will have to do it. Hamill will have to do it again. But a great ride here by Thomas Golob in pursuit. But an even greater one by Tony Rickardson to take the checkered flag. Thomas Golob in blue is in second place. Dano gets third. Billy Hamill is fourth. Dano and Hamill will have to battle again. But for those two, the world champion and the Grand Prix leader, they are safely through. Golob's gamesmanship may have kept him in it. Ricardson's riding ability on the track takes him to heat 17, Golob to heat 18, Dano and Hamill have to ride with Golob and he really needs to cool it a little bit if he's going to do well in this meeting here tonight. We saw Ricardson lifting there on the second replay PC, the only mistake he made because thereafter he was professional in the extreme, that was his only mistake. It certainly was Tony and he soon put that right. Well it means that those two Mark Green goes from gate two, Ron Sullivan from gate three and Henrik Gustafsson. Henker, as they know him, goes for the outside. Goal with a 15-second board, something they've introduced this year to know the, tell the riders they can't move away from their starting position. 
at this point. Remember, in the first two Grand Prix, we had a few problems with Greg Hancock and Tony Rickardson on that count. This is heat number 12. They look down at the tape, which fly up pretty quickly this time, and Chris Louie keeps it down. Chris Louie in front, but look at the speed of Ron Sullivan, who goes by as if he's standing still. Louie comes back, there's a battle on here, Gustafsson in yellow. Louie's bucking and rearing all over the place, which allows Gustafsson to go through. And now Louie's relegated to the last place. The screen is in third, and it's not looking too good for the Brits in this one. No, Chris Louie caught that hole there, it caught him out totally, but Joe Screen's having a big go. There in front there, Henry Gustafsson, sorry, in second place behind Ryan Sullivan. It's going real quick, Screen is having a real good go there, round the outside, but has he got the speed to catch them? That man in yellow and black is Henry Gustafsson, Ryan Sullivan is the man, he's chasing. There's problems for the Brits at the back, they will have to race again to stay in this Grand Prix, but with some ease, Ron Sullivan, who has done very, very well so far, has looked well nigh unbeatable on this circuit, could go all the way with his track noise. The man from Adelaide, the hero at the moment, the man from Adelaide is going to take the chequered flag here with some comfort ahead of Henrik Gustafsson in second place. Disappointment for the Brits as Joe Screen and Chris Louie will have to battle again. But Ron Sullivan tonight has taken the chequered flag, not for the first time. The fans here love him, Joe Screen and Chris Louie. Well, they have to go again and it will not be easy for them. Heat number 12 has not turned out too well for the Brits. But it's turned out mighty well for the Australian Ron Sullivan from Adelaide. Yeah, there's Gustafsson on the outside. Good start from him. He's in that deep dirt that's piled up against the fence. But just look at Ryan Sullivan come into the picture. He really does do well under the, in the big occasion. He's made a great start there from gate three. Gate three is not that easy to come from, but there he is. He's on the racing line immediately on the first turn in all that grip. Chris Louie there on the inside. His first ride tonight, struggling to find a way round on the inside. And this is Joe Screen in the blue having a good go. But round the outside, Gustafsson. He's on the outside of Chris Louie, who lifts there, but when they get round the pit turn, Gustafsson had gone by Louie. Louie's having a go at Joe Screen here now, but Chris ended up at the back. Joe Screen was third, but it was there. Chris Louie got that massive amount of grip entering that corner. And at Hancock and the Adams. It's Hancock on the inside. Adams from Australia goes from gate two. England's Mark Moran from gate three. Peter Carlson of Sweden, who rides for Wolverhampton in the British League. He goes from the outside. Four more riders are riding the British League. Hancock for Coventry. Adams. Starley Marshall walks away. The tapes go up. A bit of a delay from Tony Steele. Picking it up in red is Greg Hancock. Coming through the inside is Lee Adams. The Rams back in third and has work to do. But picking up speed and goes by Adams as if he's standing still. Mark the Ram producing a fine ride again. Adams is fighting back. The Ram has the speed. Well, Aram moves into second place. The Ram can now mount a challenge on the man out front. A brilliant ride again from Martin Aram. But look at the efforts of Hancock. Two class men in a class speedway race, we see. Yeah, so Greg Hancock's riding really well here, but Mark Aram's going by him. Fantastic there by Mark Aram. Mark Aram again at his brilliant best. We heard Kelvin Tatum in our studio talking about the speed of Mark's machinery. He's showing it here now in Bidgot as we go into the final lap. Mark Aram has come through from third to first. He's now opened up a 20 metre lead. And Mark Aram is a classy rider tonight on classy machinery. He journeyed out here through the night after the pool meeting on Wednesday. And now Mark Aram has shown the benefit of the extra sleep. And Mark Aram waves to the crowd, takes the checkered flag. In second place is Greg Hancock. But Mark Aram is the man of the moment. The cheers around this arena in Bidgosh greet a fantastic ride by Britain's hope. Remember, he won the Grand Prix in Sweden. Those bumps as though there's no bumps at all. Nice ride there from Greg. He knows that the track's pretty choppy. He's seen what's been going on before. He knows he's got to be careful, but he's fast with it. He's able to carry that speed right round the turn there. But Lee Adams follows him down the back straight in second place. But there's Mark Laram in third at the moment. Now Mark tries the big blast around the outside. He goes first round Peter Carlson. He goes secondly right round the outside here of Lee Adams. Lee doesn't realise that Mark's there, but just look at Mark going through that gap. Round inside one, round the other, squeezes through a gap that doesn't look as though it's there. Mark again realises he's catching Greg Hancock with a load of speed here down that pit turn. When they come onto the main straight, he gets the wheels in line very early. 
sat right back on the seat there. He's got his right leg way back there off the footrest. Bit of a puff of smoke there from Lee Adams' his bike, but... Uh, no Clean. Hans Nielsen goes to the inside. Jason Crump from Australia goes from gate two. Jacek Golov from Poland goes from gate three. And Michael Carlson, it is, from Sweden goes from gate four. Remember, we have two Golovs and two Carlsons in this meeting. We'll try and separate, if you like, the sheep for the goats. Don't need to know Polish for that, Peter. This is heat number 14. Our Starling Marshall moves away, up go the tapes again on the inside in red, it's Hans Nielsen holding pole position, speed picked up inside him by the man in white, Jacek Golov, the cheers Street Golov who shuts the gate on Jason Crump, but Crump sells in the dummy, and Crump will now try to come through on the inside, but out front Hans Nielsen, class personified, Michael Carlson way, way back, but look at the battle about the front three. There yeah. we go, this Peter, it is tremendous, isn't it? It is fantastic, Hans Nielsen there riding really well. We've seen Hans in the Grand Prix this year, some great rides. This is certainly one of the ways going, but Jack Gollum's got him in his sights. Jack's already gone by Jason Crump, and now he's chasing Hans. Just over a lap to go, in front is Hans Nielsen. Jacek Gollum's going to qualify. Jason Crump will have to battle again. Michael Carlson will have to battle again. There'll be Polish cheers at the end of this one. But Hans Nielsen may be the oldest rider in the field. But on this show, he's still one of the classiest because Hans Nielsen, with some comfort in the end, takes the jacket flag. Flag. Yes, it Golov qualifies in second place. Jason Crump and Michael Carlson will have to go again. The Polish fans are greeting the triumph of the man in second place. The man is Australia gate two. Chris Lewis from England goes from gate three. And it's Michael Carlson, the two brothers, Michael and Peter. He goes from the outside. Tony Marshall able to walk away. Referee Tony Steele has his finger on the button. Up go the tapes, and left of the tapes on the inside is Stefan Dano. That augurs well for Chris Louis, but he's still got work to do. Sandis for Dano, who'll go out. Louis moves through into second place, relegating Michael Carlson to the rear. And if Louis can hold it there, he qualify the march on. Lee Adams out front is opening up a gap for Chris Louis. It should be safety first, surely now. Yeah, this is so critical now for Chris Louis. He's got to hang on to that second place. He's doing very, very well at the moment in holding off Michael Carlson, but he needs that now to qualifies for the later heat. Lee Adams out front, Chris Louis in second place. If he holds on to this, he will go through. The pressure being exerted by Michael Carlson at the back. But it looks like disappointment for that man there, the speed Michael Carlson, who rides for Wolverhampton because he's at the rear. He's putting pressure on Louis with a lap to go now. Out front is Lee Adams on noises of Louis' machinery. And if he can hold it, he almost lost it there. He's surely got to shut the gate on Carlson round this top bend. Carlson will keep trying. Louis has mechanical problems. Surely, Louis can hang on. Louis has hung on. That's absolutely vital. Michael Carlson goes out along with Stefan Dano, who retired at the start. Lee Adams takes the checkered flag and marches on. But it was oh so nail biting. Already out. And that makes it almost a two horse race at the top between Thomas Gollum and Tony McCarlson. For this one, British referee Tony Steele looks down on the action. Again, his job to release the tapes, the clutch mechanism, delicate at the time and on the inside there and pulling through. Oh dear, what a great effort there by Joe Speed, but he's passed on the outside by Jason Crump. It's Crump first place, Screen is in second place, pulling through and pushing through in white is Billy Hamill. At the rear is Peter Carlson, a battle royal, but look out front, Jason Crump is making no mistake this time, but Screenies have to go after him. Yeah, Jason's made a great start, but look at Joe Screen, he's right in the outside run probably changed gear on that engine on that bike somehow but he's got a lot of speed he's coming under pressure from Billy Hamill it's very very important that he holds on now for this second place ahead of Billy Hamill remember the last two are eliminated so Billy Hamill will go out in this one that's the man in white bucking and rearing but Joe Screen in front of him as we go into the final lap Jason Crump in front of Joe Screen Screen going wider and wider, almost up the safety fence on that bench, but this will be enough to allow him to march on, but that man Billy Hamill will go out, there's no doubt about the quality of Jason Crump out front, Joe Screen in second place, Billy Hamill disappears from another disappointing Grand Prix, a better performance by him, but in the end he's on his way home along with the man in yellow, Peter Carlson. Those two shake hands, Jason Crump and Joe Screen. In great four. But uh, on that outside, he's certainly got the run there to go all the way round if uh, he makes a good start.
There's the star-studded lineup. Tony Rickardson, Mark Lerain, Hendrik Gustafsson, Yasek Golov. Up go the tape. Golov gets a flyer on the outside, holding him on the inside though. In red there, and moving through in white is Hendrik Gustafsson behind Tony Rickardson. Mark Lerain is back in third place. Yasek Golov suffering world disappointment here, but he'll be able to try again. Once again, Mark Lerain has to do it from the back. And is Peter Collins. How many times can this man do it? Well, he's just come straight under Henry Gustafsson now, brilliant ride, Mark now is up in the second place and that's fantastic for him because that'll take him into the main event now, into the final event, the last eight, and he's really flying in this one. On this form, Mark Moran could even win it, he's riding with brilliance, he's not making the game necessarily, but he's certainly got the speed, that inside information we heard from Kelvin Tatum tells us about that, that Mark Moran is chasing all the way, world champion Tony Rickardson, it's wide open this Grand Prix series, because Ricardo can still win it, the Rams can still do well, and both are riding very, very impressively here on this last lap. Ricardo is going to take the chicken flag ahead of Mark the Ram in blue, and really, well, disappointment for the other two. They could try again. Yes, and Gollum will be able to battle, but Tony Ricardo and Mark the Ram are safely through to the semi final. To the start and finish straight, Mark uses the short line the shortest way to the top turn, right around the inside, Gustafsson runs very, very wide, just about holds on to the bike, Gustafsson totally off the racing. Ron Sullivan on the inside, Hans Nielsen goes for gate two, Thomas Golov goes for gate three, Greg Hancock on the outside. Four more talented riders, one dominating, red helmet colours here, worn by Ron Sullivan. One heat number 12, heat one heat number eight, and red helmet colours, white, white helmet colours one, I think. Here we go, on the inside in red is Sullivan, but look coming across, cutting across in blue there is Hans Nielsen, the old master, the professor is ahead of the pupil in Rod Sullivan, back in third place in yellow and black there on the inside is Greg Hancock, he has work to do, in white at the back it's Thomas Golov, another shot here for the star pole, who didn't make it from the gate and is now going to be out fast here and will have to battle to earn a semi-final place because these two out front are going very, very well. Yeah, it just shows you, Tony, Hans Nielsen, still world-class, to make the start, lead round the first corner, pulling away from the opposition like that. Unbelievable for him in his last GP season. And there is the struggling Thomas Golov. He's in third place. Greg Hancock's at the back. These two will have to battle again in separate heats. But no doubt about the men out front, and no doubt about the two that are certain to go through to the semi-finals. Hans Nielsen in front in the blue helmet colours, and those two are trailing. There is Nielsen, takes the chicken flag, ahead of in red, Ryan Sullivan. A tremendous ride by those two. There's a lot more to do for Thomas Golob and Greg Hancock. Hans Nielsen, a familiar sight for him in the game two. Hendrik that starts at gate three, and Greg Hancock, the former world champion, on the outside in gate four. Yet to see a heat one from gate four, Peter. It's going to be tough for Greg Hancock. It is. It's tough at the top, Tony. Up on the outside here as well. Up go the tapes, they fly away. Hancock is left stranded, coming through on the inside in red is Lee Adams. Pressure being put on him on the outside by Gustafsson. Back in third place in blue is Joe Screen. Joe Screen of England has work to do. Last time he went wide and kept speed on. This time he'll have to try it again, but he's got an awful lot of work to do because Hancock has come through in the third place. Out front, Lee Adams is looking good. In second place now, it's Gustafsson. It's going to be anyone from these back three who will go through along with a man out front, Lee Adams, barring a mechanical disaster. And halfway stage, he looks set for the semi. Yeah, Lee Adams is looking great here. Joe Screen's having a big go here in the blue. He's trying to get past uh, Hector Gustafsson, but uh, he's trying everything in that dirt really wide there. As he goes for that grip out there, but he doesn't seem to have the speed, but Lee Adams is going great there in front. 300 metres to go for Joe Screen to catch him. Lee Adams is going to go through to the semi-finals here to become the second Australian so far to reach that stage. Joe Screen will try. Joe Screen is trying. Joe Screen just missed out because Gustafsson's has got it in white. Joe Screen in blue will go home. Joe Screen will be disappointed. But Lee Adams from Mildura in Australia. Lee Adams who rides for Kings Lynn and who go to the semi-finals. The last two are eliminated.
Jason Crump from Australia from the favourite gate one. Certainly, team racing could be the order of the day here. This is crucial. They look across the tape. Up go the tape. Coming across is Thomas Golov. He's going to pick up the grip for go down the back straight. His brother tries to go with him and does. And now the Golovs are one and two. And listen to the cheers here in Bidcon. Because this means an awful lot of work now for Jason Crump for Chris Louis. And we could have two Golovs into the semi finals. They're being separate semi finals. So we could have two Golovs in the final. But not to them because Thomas Golov now has got time. He's got space. His brother can look back. And well, 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 Chris Louis and Jason Crump are looking out of this at the moment. Although Crump can still battle. Yeah, Golov first and second. The unbelievable first corner by the Golov boys. So difficult from the outside start. But just look at them now pulling away. Jason Crump gave a bit of a challenge, but he seems to have given up now. A tremendous ride by these two. The cheers in Big God. They have never heard so much noise in a Speedway Stadium in your life. It's coming to a crescendo because the Golods are one Thomas, two Jacek, both are qualified for the semi-finals. It's dancing time. It's celebration time. It's party time here in Big God. And the Polish flags match every wave of that checkered flag in happy times here in Bidgot. Peter certainly has looked impressive throughout. On his outside will be Jacek Golov. There he is coming up. Remember, his brother goes to the outside gate in the second semi-final. Jacek Golov from the outside gate in this one. Tony Rickardson is the world champion on the inside. Ron Sullivan goes from gate two in blue from Australia. Lee Adams from Australia goes from gate three, and on the outside, Yasek Golov. The cheers here will be for Yasek Golov, Peter, the full man, Tony Rickardson. My money's on Tony Rickardson, Tony. Ron Sullivan going well too. Sonny Marshall moves away. The start is going to be crucial. Picked up there by Rickardson. Yasek Golov left at the back. Yasek Golov will have to battle. He won't make the final if it stays like this. He's got a lot of ground to make up. But look at the efforts of the front two here. Because going well is Tony Rickardson if he's going wide. In second place is Ryan Sullivan. Work to be done by Lee Adams. Yasek Golov surely out of this one. Tony Rickardson once again looking immaculate. Tony's looking fantastic. He really is going good. The bike seems to me as though it's working so well. That bit of grip he got coming out of that corner. Big wheelie, but still managed to maintain that lead. But Ryan Sullivan's having a great go, but uh, Tony looks great tonight. Tony Rickardson going well if he can keep this form up. Who knows, there could be a change in the finishing order. Change in the standings in the World Grand Prix because Tony Rickardson is, has a lap to go before he knows he's in the big one. He's in the finale. He's in Heat 24. Tony Rickardson looking well nigh unbeatable. Yes, they call up nowhere. In second place, it's Ron Sullivan. Disappointment for Lee Adams. He and Jacek Golub will have to go in the consolation final. Tony Rickardson, the world champion, is going brilliantly. And once again, he takes the chequered flag from Heat 21. Fantastic from the start there, Tony. You see that he's dropped the clutch. He's got one finger still on it there. He's just holding onto that clutch. By the time he gets to the corner, he lets go with that other finger. And then when he gets to the turn, instead of throwing the bike sideways, he lets it run just that little bit to push Ryan Sullivan off the racing line. Ryan's riding very wide now, but now Tony cuts back to the inside. There's some grip right down low there on the white line. Tony uses that and just pulls away. Fantastic ride. You see there, he's got his foot still on that inside footrest as he dives across those bumps there on the back wheel, using all that grip and uh, fantastic. So we move on now to Heat 22, the second semi-final, the vital one for Mark Moram. He will be wearing the blue helmet colours. The man coming out in yellow and black there is Thomas Golov. You can hear the cheers. He waves to his fans. The man in blue behind him is Mark Aram. Remember, Thomas Golov is going for what has so far proved that I'm possible. Gate four in the yellow helmet colours. The racing is classy and it's intense. And the excitement is certainly very real. Hans Nielsen on the inside. Mark Laram goes from gate two. Henrik Gustafsson from gate three in white. And Thomas Golov, the favourite here in Bidgosh, he goes to the outside. Absolutely crucial. And as you see from there, nearly half the races have been won from gate one. None has so far been won from gate four. A telling statistic. Can the lie be told by Thomas Golov on the outside?
There he is, the yellow helmet coming. Away they go from the tapes now. Golov comes across behind them. Is he going to make a challenge up the inside? It read out front is Hans Nielsen. Mark Aram is coming through again. A familiar tale for the rider in blue, Mark Aram. He puts the pressure on Golov in second place. Golov is blocking Loram's racing line. Out front in red there, Hans Nielsen, the professor, the veteran, the oldest rider in the field. But look at the battle in second place as Mark Aram is putting Golov under pressure. Golov can't make a single mistake here because Mark Aram is getting closer. Half the race gone. Mark's having to change the line. Mark's coming again. Look at the battle in second place. He's up there. He's half a length behind. Golov goes wide. The ramp comes through. Not quite. Out front, certainly Nielsen going well. Still a lap to go. Look at the battle. The battle in second place is something pretty special because Mark Aram goes through on the inside. Golov comes again. The ramp comes again. The ramp is going to make it. Golov is going to make it. The ramp does it just. What a ride in second place. Hans Nielsen may have won it, but Mark Aram has undoubtedly got second place. Mark Aram is through to the final. Thomas Golov isn't. What speedway this is. Peter Collins, what a night we have here in Big Gone. Oh, Tony's voice is gone. It's fantastic. What a ride from Mark Aram. I really did feel that Mark had got the speed. He was really putting Golov under pressure. Golov was trying his best. He was riding all over the track, but Mark, he is so determined in when he's in this kind of mood. Fantastic there from Mark. He was trying outside, inside. There's the winner, Hans Nielsen, but it's so important to get that second place because that second also goes to the final, and it is Mark Laram. Well, it's closed up by Mark Laram to get second place. There's the result. Nielsen and Laram are through to the final. Thomas Golov isn't. Henrik Gustafsson is not at the top of the Grand Prix after tonight, ahead of Thomas Golov. Peter, that, I'm sure, is something pretty special. Well, what a day, boys. I've got to say, our studio guests here were up in the air there. Mark Laram, absolutely superb stuff here as he slid through. Talk us through it, Kel. Well, you can see he's completely missed the start. And, like, you know, there's only one rider in the world that can sort of pull off a race like this, and that is Mark. You know, he's past Henker there on the first lap, and then he's just literally worn Thomas Gollop down. And mentally, he's just sort of beaten Thomas Gollop up, really, because, you know, he just never gave in. and. Uh, I'm proud of him. He's really done a superb race there. His, uh, it was just tremendous to watch him keep working it. And like, um, like you said, Kelvin, well, he's used to not making the start, so this is like a routine for him. You know, he just works it. Sure, but well, in, a, in a race of this quality, Sam, let's take it from the start. Well, then, uh, and you boys get stuck into this. Sure. Point. Well, you see, Gollum's dived up the inside. Mark's back in last place now. Mark lines up Henker straight away, and actually nearly has a go at Thomas there on the first lap. But uh, from now on, it's all about sheer determination from Mark now. He, he, sh he was, I was saying during the race when we were watching, he's too nice. He had an opportunity to really move goal up in a fair way to take his line. And he didn't, he let him go, but he just nipped him at the finish line. And that was just pure, you know, it could have went either way. And yeah. you'll see that, you'll see that in the next corner coming up going into this corner down here. Sure. I think you guys were talking a little bit earlier on about... Uh... See, just, just right here, he should just right... Mm, that, that would have been naughty if he'd dived underneath him there. I think it's actually Sorry, on the it's last next, it's it's on the, corner, it's on yeah. the last lap. He's actually got underneath Thomas now. He gets underneath Thomas now, yeah. and he should have maybe just moved a little bit wider yeah. here. Right as they here run in the there, that he yeah. allowed Thomas to keep his momentum going there. Yeah. And that made it closer than it needed to be. Yeah. <laughs> he was in the driving seat I'll there to make a move. Oh. Ricardo, if he wins the final, would certainly take the lead. If he comes second in the final, well, so Golob will still be in front. We'll have to wait and see. Remember, those two Golobs, it is Thomas from gate two in blue, and it's Jacek from gate three in white. Lee Adams on the inside. Henrik has started on the outside. Up go the tapes, and away they go. Thomas Golob in blue, picks it up. On the inside of him is Lee Adams. There's a battle here. Golob uses his speed down the outside. Lee Adams is determined. Golov makes it on the bed. Adams up the inside. Golov can't pick up the grip. Adams will now be in pole position. Golov comes through the inside. Adams will come back. Golov goes wide. A mistake by the pole. He surely won't make it again. It's a ding-dong battle out front. Golov and Adams. 
but Golov is going to get this from here, surely. And that will still put the cat among the pigeons. It will be Rickardson will have to win the final to take the lead. This is quite a speedway meeting, PC, and this a good ride by Thomas Golov. It's an unbelievable ride from Golov. You see the way he totally used the whole of the track there as he used that manoeuvre to go past Lee Adams. Fantastic. But uh, unfortunately, it's only the B final for him. It's only the B final, but victory here will give him a valuable 15 Grand Prix points. And the man in blue there, Thomas Golov, has time to look back, has time to assess the situation, and he has taken it in front of Lee Adams in red. Thomas Golov finishes fifth in this Grand Prix. He backs 15 points, which takes him on to 90. Remember, Tony Rickardson went into tonight on 66. So there's plenty to race for. The fireworks are frying. Tricet Gollum came third, there you see from the captain, Hendrick the starts and a disappointing fourth. But the win by Thomas Gollum still gives him a chance, very much so, of that world title PC. Yeah, fantastic from Gollum. He rolled brilliantly in that race, but... This is the start here. There's Gollum in the blue. When the tapes go up, he's totally in command. He turns very, very late as he enters the corner inside there of his brother. I think his brother Jack there was staying out of the action. I don't think he wanted to get involved in this because he knows it's crucial for Thomas to get as much points as possible in this race. There, Lee Adams does a great ride round the inside. Thomas uses the dirt around the outside, but Lee Adams, all credit to him, he's not given up at all. He's right in there on the inside. He comes down the inside there, trying to get inside of Thomas Golob. Tom had Thomas now runs very, very wide towards the dirt. He makes a bit of a straight in the middle of the corner there before he turns in that dirt. Now, this allows Lee to come straight back into the picture. Now, at this point, Lee Adams looks as though he's winning the race, but Thomas, he never gives up whatsoever. He gets the wheels in line before he enters the corner and zooms straight underneath Lee Adams. Looks as though he's going to overtake him. Lee fights back, and uh, Thomas turns right by the fence there. He's almost gone through the fence turns back and he's just done enough there to zoom down the outside of Lee Adams to regain that lead. So Thomas Golov finishing first in the consolation final. It allows him to take fifth place in the Grand Prix. There's plenty more coming up even though it's just one heat. Can Mark Moran win his second Grand Prix of the season? Or can Tony Rickardson, the world champion, take the lead in the series? All of that to follow in the final here from Bitcoin. Nielsen in the red helmet colours, the 39-year-old oldest rider in the field from Brost in Denmark in his last Grand Prix year. There in the white helmet colours is Ron Sullivan, the youngest of the four riders in this final. The 24-year-old from Adelaide has been flying tonight. There is Mark Loran, Britain's hope. He'd go fourth in the series tonight if he won this one. He's 28 years old, born in Malta, rides for Paul. And Mark Loran tonight provided the flair from the back. The rider in blue there, Tony Rickardson, the current world champion, the 29-year-old from Avesta in Sweden. A talented lineup, PC. It is. Mark Loram's got gate four. He won't be worried about that at all. He's won all his races from the back, and uh, that's where he's on the outside in this one. There's the lineup. Hans Nielsen, Tony Rickardson, Ron Sullivan, Mark Loram, a referee, Tony Steele, puts up the tape. There they go. Nielsen picks up pole position. The Ram comes through or drives to in third. Doesn't he's back in fourth? It's the man in white, Ron Sullivan, battling for second place. Tony Rickardson is in second place. Hans Nielsen out front. Can the veteran do it? Work for the men behind. Nielsen doesn't often get beaten from this position. Half personified. He may be a veteran, but what a ride. The fans are cheering because they want Rickardson put back. And that's exactly what's happening at the moment. Nielsen's going like a jet tonight. Flying every single race. Never got dirty. Brilliant riding from him. And so fast. And what a way to go in his second to the last Grand Prix. Look at Rickardson through into second place. These points could be invaluable. He's not going to catch Hans Nielsen with a lap to go, but he's going to earn the 20 Grand Prix points for second place. That will take him up, certainly way up front now to 86, just four points behind the Grand Prix leader. But there is Hans Nielsen. The fist salutes him. Hans Nielsen earns victory. Hans Nielsen earns the 25 points. Tony Rickardson in second place gets 20 Grand Prix points. There's going to be four points in it going to the final of the Grand Prix series. 
and those fans here in Bidgosh are absolutely delighted that Tony Richardson's been beaten into second place because their man, Thomas Gollard, still holds the Grand Prix leadership going into the final meeting of the season. But the honour, the glory, the talent and the experience belongs to Hans Nielsen, who won that one ahead of Tony Richardson, the Australian Ron Sullivan in third place, Britain's Mark Moran, Disappointment for him in fourth. I wonder if he gets a wild card or a place in the final Grand Prix. But Hans Nielsen, the lights go up in Bitgosh for the 39-year-old from Brooks in Denmark, who yet again has won a major speedway meeting and still has the athleticism and the fitness to do the wheelie down the straight. He's a great golfer as well. He's going to enjoy that in retirement, but he's still a very, very fine speedway rider. And look at the enthusiasm. He's going to get the bumps. And he's also going to get a very big winner's check here, Hans Nielsen. In between them, in blue, we've got Jimmy Nielsen. And in white, Peter Carlson. Peter Carlson, the elder of the two brothers, 29-year-old. And this is a very, very crucial heat. Third and fourth will be eliminated for the rest from the rest of the evening's proceedings and have to slink off home with just four points to show for their efforts. So Golub, Nielsen, Carlsen, Karga, Poland, Sweden, Sweden and Denmark. Twenty thousand people packed into this fine stadium. Eyes left or right. Oh and Karga's Karga's engines launched itself on the line. Oh, what bad luck, and this, the Dane gets pushed off. Oof, and after a brilliant start initially from Peter Carson, he suddenly loses traction completely, and he finds that Jacek Golub and Jimmy Nielsen are ahead of him, and the crowd are delighted because Golub's leading. Well, it looks like if uh, Thomas Golub isn't going to bring on the cookies, cookies for them, perhaps his kid brother can. But that battle for second place is going to hot up, and it's going to be a critical one. Jimmy Nilsson versus Peter Carlson, the two Swedes. One of them is going to be eliminated from the evening's proceedings as from the end of this heat. Jimmy Nilsson, runner-up in the World Championship last year. Oh, and Carlson's coming at him, coming at him, coming at him. Carlson, who won the first of his Swedish National Championships as a teenager, as a 19-year-old. Best placing of sixth in the World Championship back in 1996. And he's coming, the 29-year-old Swede, closing on his compatriot. Takes a look up the inside as they go for the line, and I think he got it. I think he got it by the width of a wheel. So Jimmy Nielsen, oh, Jimmy Nielsen, I think, has gone out. And listen to the reception for Jacek Golob. These 20,000 devoted fans have come to see the Golobs in action. And uh, this, this Golob has just gobbled up heat 10. Carlson getting the power down, getting through the inside, up the inside line and squeezing his way out and finally making it through as Jacek Golob takes first place in front of the two Swedes. Cup and the Garland going to Ron Sullivan from Adelaide. Plenty of people here and probably the longest presentation we get in the Grand Prix series is here in Poland because it is a big occasion. There's his medal, there's his cup, there's his garland. The champagne will follow. The kisses on this side of Europe. Perhaps we didn't see that in Coventry, PC. No, I think uh, Ryan was a bit uh, apprehensive about that, wasn't he, looking at his face? Second man up will be a man who can still be world champion, who is the world champion at the moment. But he hasn't won tonight, but he's very popular here. Not as popular as Thomas Gollum, of course, but a great rider is Tony Ricardson. Second position. How great a rider is he, Peter, among those you've known? Uh, well, he's brilliant. There's no doubt about it. We saw him at Coventry in the, the British Grand Prix. He dominated that, and he, he was dominating today apart from the final, but he got no answer to Hans Nielsen. But he's a worthy champion. He's, he's the current world champion, he's, he's double world champion, and uh, could he be three times world champion after the Voyans Grand Prix? Well, we fans this are still to come, does he compare with the greats, the majors, the Briggs, the Pennells, the Collins perhaps? Well, I think you've got to look at the number of uh, world championships that Hans has won, and I think he's won four world finals. 
and that's Oli Olsen with him there that's won three. So uh, hands straight amongst uh, the the, uh, the ones that could walk on water in the sport. Well, there is the man at the moment. There is the man who's popular tonight with the poles because he's squeezed out Tony Ricardson, the pretender to the title they want to see going to their own Thomas Golov. But Hans Nielsen, the smiles tell it all. The garland of flowers, the congratulations and the check belong to the Grand Prix winner here in Bidkosh, Hans Nielsen. At 39, the oldest rider here tonight, but on the track, he's proved that he's the best. Back in our studio, the two fine riders, Kelvin Tatum and Sam Malenka, along with Keith Hewin. What a performance by the great man. Thank you, Tony. Well, it's a sight that uh, I think warms the cockles of our hearts to see Hans Nielsen in the twilight of his career. He's retiring at the end of this year. What a win. And he could go out to Voyens, the final round, and do it all again there on this kind of performance, Sam. We, we've overlooked him in the past at Voyens, and he won, he won the Grand Prix there. So he's um, definitely very capable. Any, any one of those guys are capable of winning uh, that are sitting on the top there right now. And uh, Hans, I'm sure, would like to go out on top. Kelvin, Tony Rickardson now only four points off of Thomas Golov's lead. Voyens in Denmark, the final round of this series is going to be something very special.